Yin Yoga, Gentle Flow. I'm glad you could join me today. Thank you. We're going to get started here in a few minutes. So all you need is some space to move, a mat. If you have a strap, that's awesome. You can use a tea towel or a belt instead. Also a pillow or a block would be handy too as well. And again, I'm Shar. I'm glad you're joining. those muscle fibers deeply and thoroughly. We tend to stay in our postures for longer than you normally would. Also, it's a grounded and centered posture. We're gonna to stay towards the ground a little bit more instead of standing up. So, let's get started. I think Comet here is going to join us. But we're gonna actually start down on the ground. Now, you can find yourself here in Varasana. This feels okay. Or go ahead and join me in a low crouch position. So just kind of fly where you need to be here. Maybe a little bit farther forward, maybe a little bit farther back. But press your heels down, let your head, your neck just lengthen out. Let gravity help you stretch that neck musculature. Relax the shoulders, the core, the hips, the spine. And start to find that deep lateral breath. Deep cleansing breath. So as you inhale, let the lungs expand along with that rib cage. Exhale. And again, inhale. Find deeper expansion here. Let your belly push forward and out. Kind of feel that diaphragm, that big breathing muscle, open up and descend along with the pelvic floor. Another try. Inhale. And exhale. Finding decompression, expansion, opening up. And then from here, go ahead and roll that right ear over towards the right shoulder and start to feel the musculature of your neck lengthen and stretch. Two muscles we're mainly concerned with here are the SEM and the levators. If this doesn't feel good, go ahead and ditch it. If it feels pretty good, come on here. Roll the left ear over to the left shoulder. And then just find a really slow and mindful flow here. You might note that your calves are starting to stretch here. Go ahead, let them stretch. Press your heels down. And being really mindful here, this is all about mindful mobility, folks. Careful to not move that neck in a sharp or jerky motion. Doesn't appreciate it. Really slow. Inhale. And exhale, let's do one more right here. Just start to feel that low back, your lumbar spine open up. Then bring it back to center. Take a big deep breath. That deep cleansing breath, lateral breathing. Expand. Inhale. And exhale. All right, one more time. Deepest breath you can muster. Inhale. And exhale. All right. Keep going here. I'm going to make sure I turn on my clock here so we don't go over time. Sorry about that, folks. Maybe one more deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. And then slowly maneuvering out of that position, you can go back to Varasana, your healing posture, or tall kneeling posture, or you can join me in a Malasana. All right, so toes are going to be forward or slightly turned out. Long spine, tight active core, gently squeeze your shoulder blades together and shine your chest forward. And come on down. Now, this is my lasana, deep squat. Again, if you're like, oh, not today, go ahead and find child's pose or go back to that varasana, that kneeling posture. And if this is feeling great, go ahead, keep going. This is a major hip opener, so use your elbows to kind of push those knees out of the ankles just a little more. And we try to sink those glutes a little bit more if you can. And again, if this doesn't work, don't do it. Find something that does work for you. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Just one more each side. And then last time. 
and then carefully maneuvering back down. Let's go ahead and turn to the side here. Find your quadruped position. So quadruped, hands, shoulder width apart, knees are hip width apart, shoulders down or back, bend the elbows, hug them in. Ribs in, obliques out, six bones in, so we engage all parts of the core. Take a big deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Again, this is a transition pose. Inhale. And exhale. Now your gaze is forward. Your drishti points your knees and point your chin. So you have your eyes. So right here, straight forward. Take another deep breath and push your palms into that mat. Inhale. And exhale. Now curl those toes under and let's get ready to find Adho Mukha Shavanasana, our downward facing dog. So from here, Stretch, extend that downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shavanasana. Press your heels down, lift your boots up. Inhale, maybe three, maybe four feet between your hands and your toes. Shoulders down back, then the elbows, hug them in. Tighten and pack up that core. Ribs in, obliques out, six bones in. And then slowly guide yourself back down into that quadruped. Let's try that again. Here we go. Inhale. Big deep cleansing breath up, slow and steady. Let it stretch. And then exhale, flow it back down. This would be considered Vinyasa Kriya. So, yoga of action. Keep breathing here, inhale. And then exhale on your way down, two more. And here's that exhale. Last one, inhale. And then exhale, bring it down into Sukhasana, carefully maneuvering yourself into your crisscross position, and then go ahead and switch those legs, find your non-dominant leg. And then take a moment, just pause, up, back down with the shoulders, gently squeeze the shoulder blades together in the back, ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in, connecting all parts of the core. And start to find your Urva Hastasana, inhale, and then exhale, slow and steady. I want you to think about lengthening each and every part of that vertebral column right here. From the coccyx, your tailbone, all the way out to the top of that cervical spine, the C1, the atlas bone. Stretch and lengthen your spine. Find some breathing room in that spine. Inhale. And then exhale. Okay, let's do two more right here. Big breath in. And then big breath out. Last one. Lengthening. Inhale. And then exhale. And we've got a couple options here, and I'll show you that first option. Down and back. Ribs in. Obliques out. Sits bones in. Press your palms together. Your palms are an Anjali Mudra, so palms are pressing tight together. Spread the fingers out and feel the intrinsic muscles of the hands and wrists start to light up. Option A, you can find a little bit of rotation in the torso, the trunk here. Be mindful not to twist the low back of that lumbar spine, and then back to center. Inhale, and exhale. Remember, the twist is not coming from your shoulders. It's coming from the core, the upper middle spine, the thoracic spine, that T-spine. You can stay right here. Maybe this is feeling really good, or you join me in opening the hands out in front and clasping them together, right back in that Anjali Mudra. Up, back down, ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in. You're gonna find opening here, so open your book. No twist, no twist in those hips. And then close your book, <coughs> pardon me. A frog jumped in my throat right there. And then try the other side, open your book, inhale, <coughs> and then exhale. And continue on with this, striving here. Square hips, no twist in the shoulders. Keep the twist localized in the trunk, the core, that upper middle back, the T-spine. Maybe you're starting to feel the pecs really stretch here. Gently stretching through the pecs, the lats here. Just one more each side. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, lengthen that spine, lift it up, don't sink. Don't crunch into that spine. Then bring it down and find Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale and then exhale. Okay, lateral spinal bending. 
So place one hand here. Let's find that side to side bend here. So bending laterally through the spine. A great way, yep, to work the core, but also working those intrinsic spinal muscles. Keep breathing here, inhale and exhale. Now, if this doesn't feel good, you can always go back to one of those first options that we were exploring. Or stick with it right here. Big deep breaths, inhale. And exhale. Just two more. One more each side. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Big breath in. And big breath out. Okay. Urdhva Hastasana. Bring it up. Inhale. And exhale. Right back to your Ajahn Mudra heart center. All right. Carefully maneuvering back into that quadruped, we're going to move into the moon salutation. Now I've designed this moon salutation to be close to the ground to open up the shoulders and the spine, also the hips. So let's start right here. Shoulders down the back, bend the elbows, hug them in, push your hands into your mat. Ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in, gently squeezing your shoulder blades towards each other. Tighten, pack the core, take a big deep breath, inhale. And exhale. All right, here we go. From quadruped, maneuver yourself into Adho Mukha Shavanasana. That downward facing dog, press the heels down, lift the glutes up and the elbows, hug them in. Shoulders down, back, gently squeeze in your shoulder blades and breathe. Deep cleansing lateral breath pattern, inhale. And exhale. All right, again, big deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Now we're gonna hold this downward dog for about a minute. So settle in, relax your knees, relax your quads, maybe lift the glutes up a little higher. Relax the head and neck down, and just melt into this one. Keeping that breath deep and even, inhale. And exhale, maybe lift the glutes up just a little bit more. Remember, with yin yoga, Postures are held for a longer period of time here. This enables you to really access deep stretching of those muscle fibers. Keep breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Almost there. About halfway. Keep going. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, 
Exhale, we're not going to hold this downward dog as long as we did that first one. Go ahead, looking at the left foot, lift it up. Spiral the hip bends with the knee toes point to the ground. Just enough to engage the muscular of the leg and then bring it through. Inch by inch, until you find Anjaneyasana. Now remember, really important to remember, the knee lines up with the ankle. Does not push up over the toes. You can stay here, just kind of tucking the right glutes under. Maybe that'll stretch those hip flexors for you. Or if you need a little more, lift up that right arm and tilt it over to the side here. Shoulders gonna draw down. Tight core, squeeze those shoulder blades together, lean it back. A little bit of spinal extension, but keep it safe. Use the core. Maybe the other arm comes up to meet that one. Big deep breath, inhale. Exhale. So we're transitioning with these postures. So not, they're not held as long for four, three, two, and one. Then really carefully bring yourself back down into that quadruped. All right. So we're going to find hip circles. So it might help to bring the hands a little bit farther out in front. Shoulders down and back. Then the elbows have them in. Push your hands into the mat. Ribs in. Oblique out. Sits bones in. And then start to circle. Again, it doesn't matter which direction you go because we will switch. Keep breathing, inhale, and exhale. Just two more this direction. You're gonna feel a compression, even those hip flexors. Helps them to release. Okay, one more for good measure. And then switch it. Other way, other direction. Inhale, and exhale. Keep breathing in. And out, let's do two more right here. Last one. All right, then bring it back to that quadruped and pause for a moment, maybe. You have to readjust it, it's okay. Shoulders down and back, then the elbows tuck them in, ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in. We're gonna walk it out. We're gonna find some strengthening in those shoulder systems. Walk out the right. Walk out the left, right, left until you find yourself in a pretty extended position here. Then walk it back in. Keep going. Let's do that again. This time alternating the hands. This time left, right, left, right. Hello, core in its entirety right here. Also, bonus, the shoulder systems. Keep going. <clears throat> All right. Let's do one more, ready? Right, left, right, left, pause, and then bring it back in. Okay, from here, go ahead, roll it down the back, then the elbows tuck them in, ribs in, openings out, suspends in, and then walk the hands up both together here. And let's find that Anahatasana, otherwise known as Shoshasana, this is puppy dog. So press the hips back. And then try to touch that chest down. It's okay if your chest does not reach your mat. Totally fine. Maybe you're up here and maybe you're low. Everyone's going to be unique here and that is a beautiful thing. So you do you and breathe. We're going to hold this one a long time. It's going to be a minute. So breathe deep here. Inhale. And exhale. Maybe you're able to go a little bit lower. Into this one, deep stretch along the pectorals, pec minor, pec major, shoulder systems, those rotator cuff muscles, shoulder capsule muscles. Keep breathing. Also, those lats. Try to keep that spine nice and neutral. You're almost halfway there. Keep going. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe tuck those toes under and push into them. Just stretch them a little. Keep breathing in and out. All right, 20 seconds, keep going. Breath is deep and even back to that lateral breathing pattern. That's 10, nine, eight, seven, just six, almost there, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, carefully maneuver out of that, because I know that's a lot. Maybe feeling a little stiff. So let's go ahead and roll those shoulders. Go back. Just three. Just two. Okay, maybe one more. 
And then reverse it this one. Lift your elbows. A little bit of shoulder rotation in there. Inhale. And exhale. Almost there. Two more in. And out. Excuse me. I need to have words with my cat here. Shoot. <laughs> okay. From here, we're going to go ahead and bring ourselves into Dandasana. So go ahead and find yourself in staff position. So feet are just straight out in front of you. Flex your toes, flex those feet, relax the knees, relax the quads. And then if your wrists are feeling kind of achy, you can go ahead and find some fists here to take out that wrist flexion. Shoulders down, back bend, elbows hug them in, ribs in, pull these out, sits bones in. Take a big deep breath right here, inhale. And exhale. All right, now from here, we're gonna focus on the feet. All right, so remember, your feet, your foundation, your base, they're kind of your everything here. And when you have dysfunction in your feet, it travels right on up to the rest of the body. So let's focus on this feet. First thing, I want you to spread your toes as wide as you can. So try to create space between each and every toe and then hold that space. This is harder than you think it's gonna be, so give it a try. Hold in that space, maybe flex the feet a little bit more. Find that deep breath, inhale, and exhale. Now keep going there, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that music down. It's a bit loud, I'm thinking. All right, that's a little better. All right, so keep spreading those toes. Keep that upright Dandasana position. Shoulders down, squeeze those shoulder blades together, tighten pack your core. And then I want you to go ahead and find the right foot. Point that foot, so plant or flex the foot and then flex it and then alternate. Point and flex. Yep, ankle work. Keep breathing, inhale and exhale. Just one more each side, inhale and exhale, in and out. Then start to roll. Again, it doesn't matter which direction you choose, just find a good one. And then reverse that ankle roll. Three, two, and one. Okay, go ahead, check it out. Loosen it up, let's find that Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale, and exhale, straight down. Okay, from here, we're gonna move into something called Varadvajasana. So, you're gonna take the right leg out in front, left leg here. And again, you can modify this. Maybe this feels better, less stress on those knees. So find where you need to be. Find your Varadha Yasana, and then hands to heart center. Shoulders down and back, ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in, lengthen that spine. Take a big deep breath, inhale, and exhale. He's causing a lot of mischief right now. <laughs> and then again, big deep breath, inhale, and exhale. All right, again, you can always modify this. If the knees just are not handling this well, it's gonna go right here, just one on top of the other. But from here, again, you can kind of just find that rotation in the core right here, in that upper middle back, that thoracic spine, or you can join me in a spinal twist. So trying to kind of place both parts of your glutes on the ground here, you're going to take that right arm, extend it behind you, take the left, right at the knee, don't apply a lot of torque here. And then just look out over that right shoulder. Take a big deep breath, inhale, and exhale. Now this is not a true spinal twist, it's more like you're rolling through the spine here. So maybe you make that roll a little bit more, reach it back a little more. You can also opt to bind and then push the elbow back and really feel a deep stretch in the shoulder systems. Take another big deep breath, inhale, and exhale, keep breathing, inhale, and exhale. We're holding this one for a while, minute. So hold on here, I'm gonna get my cat out of the way, so keep going guys. Keep breathing, holding on to that posture. Remember the deep lateral breathing pattern. And try to extend, try to deepen if you can here. Again, you want to lengthen that spine as much as you can without putting a lot of torque right here. 
So keep this in your core. Use your core to find that little bit of roll in the spine. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Keep going. Just 10. 9. 8. 7. To 6. 5. Four, three, two, and one. Okay. Urdhva Hastasana, release from that. Inhale, and then exhale. Then, we're going to find a bit of a forward fold here in your Bharadvayasana. Keep going forward. Ooh, all right. Hello. Abductors, the external hip rotators. You're going to feel those here. Maybe you rest your forehead on top of your forearms. Just relax. Breathing deeply. Inhale. And exhale. Now this is a transitory posture right here, so you won't hold it as long. Just 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. Carefully maneuver yourself up. Virga Hastasana. Inhale and exhale. Now, kind of a bonus point here. You've got your hip and internal rotation on the left side, hip and external rotation on this side. So maybe you lean back and get a little bit more out of that internal hip rotation on that left side. Take another breath. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, carefully maneuver yourself out of that posture, back into your dandasana, and gently wiggle that out. Real gentle here. And then I'm gonna go at an angle here. But we're gonna find a Navasana modification. So this is basically upright seated cobbler's pose or Baha Konasana. So take one arm, loop it around that, that right leg, take the other one, loop it around the left. Press your, your, both your feet together, shoulders down and back, ribs in, obliques out, sit bones in, and then try to lengthen your spine. Okay, if you're like, yeah, sharp, no thanks, not today, you can always go right to Baha Konasana right here and use those adductors, the upper inner thighs, to push the knees down. Or you can keep it up. Again, working on lengthening that spine from the bottom, which is the classics, all the way up out through the top of the head, through that C1, that atlas bone. Keep going, we're gonna hold this one for a good long minute. Inhale, and exhale, maybe. Soften those elbows on the inside, and maybe you apply a little bit of pressure there, and push the knees down a little more. Again, if this doesn't feel good, you can ditch it. Find that traditional cobbler's pose and hold on to it. Press the palms together, or sorry, not the palms. Press the soles of your feet together, that's what I'm after. And find that big, deep breath, inhale, and exhale. And we call that guy the orange menace. He's quite mischievous. Keep breathing here. We got another 10, 9, just 8, 7, 6, 5, you're almost there, 4, 3, 2, and one. Okay, you've got an option. Option, go right here and hold this one. Option, if you're up for it, I'm up for it. Here we go. Down and backwards and release out. Six bones in. You're going to extend the right leg carefully. Open it up. Stretch it out. Flex your foot. Relax the knee. And then maybe open it up a little bit more and then bring it back. Again, this is transitory, so we won't hold it long. Down and backwards and release out. Six bones in. And that's fine. That other leg. Open it up. Guide it open. Lengthen. Like and then bring it down and back. And then we're gonna go back to that quadruped position. So right here, touch your toes, hands right underneath the shoulders, shoulder width apart, up back down, then the elbows have them in. Your knees are hip width apart. Take a big deep breath, inhale. And exhale. All right, again, inhale. And exhale. All right, from here. Back to that downward facing dog. Press the heels down, your Adho Mukha Shavanasana. And then I want you to hold this one for eight, 
seven. Just kind of release any tightness that you picked up. Relax the knees, relax the quads. Just six, five, four, just three, two, and one. Now, moving into four point hold. Then the elbows have them in, shoulders down the back, squeeze those shoulder blades together, tighten pack your core. Drishti point is forward, now shift your weight forward. Oh, we're not gonna hold this for a minute, no worries. <laughs> Just 10, nine, maybe push back on your feet, stretch those feet, eight, seven, just six, five, four, three, two, and then go ahead, release it, and let's roll out those fingers, roll out those wrists, Kind of make a little sphere here and then reverse it. And then Urga Hastasana, inhale and exhale. All right, moving on. Grab your strap or whatever you're using for a strap, or you can always go strapless, totally fine. And then place it beside you. Go ahead from Dandasana, shake it out, loosen it up. We're going to move into Gomukhasana or cow face posture. So, here it is. We're going to take that left leg, fold it under, take the right, bring it across, and find this position. Now, you may be tempted to go right here, but try to bring that right hip down so both cheeks are on the mat. Shoulders down and back, ribs in, hold knees out, six bones in, lift the spine. Maybe this is enough. Maybe you stay right here, focusing on this, allowing the abductors and deep external rotators in your glutes to stretch. Or maybe, you're gonna have hold of that strap, fold it in half, or approximately fold it in half, and then bring it behind you. So you're pulling down with the left arm and you're extending through the triceps with that right. You're sort of extending through the triceps. Keep breathing, inhale, lengthen that spine up, shoulders down and back, ribs in, hold this out, six bones in. In this position, it is really tempting and there's a tendency to wanna to collapse. Do not collapse that spine. Lengthen it up as much as you can here. Deep breathing, inhale, and exhale. All right, I want you to try to release the right hip structure, those abductors, the external rotators. Again, we're staying here for a while. So keep breathing, it's counting down. We won't be here forever, just long enough. Remember, don't sink into that spine, lift it up really important to remember to lift it strong and tall. Keep the core active. Inhale and exhale. Okay, folks, it's just 20 more seconds. We can do this. Keep breathing. Remember, both parts of your glutes, right and left, they're on that floor. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. All right, just 10, 9, 8, Seven, to six, almost there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I want you to ditch the strap and then go right back here to your gomukhasana legs. So we've ditched the upper body portion. We're gonna find a forward fold. So you can, if you'd like, adjust this so that you've got that ankle a little bit higher up above the left knee and find what we call Agnishtambhasana or fire log. So again, you can stay here. Maybe this is enough. Deep stretch through the abductors, the deep external rotators, or lift it up, inhale, and then exhale forward fold. Whew. All right, I'm feeling this today. I don't know about y'all, but this one's getting me. You can walk, just kind of walk those hands forward to get a deeper stretch. Go ahead and let the spine round here. But keep your core active to support. All right, folks, again, some of you may find this really easy, the rest of us not so much. You have about 30 seconds here, so keep breathing. You can go ahead and lift up on out of it if you need to at any point. Take a break or stay right here and kind of lift up here. Breathe, inhale, and exhale. Maybe when you fill up to it again, you can lean it forward. Okay, we're nearly there. We got this. Four, three, two, and one. Carefully maneuvering up and 
out of that. Oh, all right. Unpretzelize yourself and then shake it out. Shake it out. And then Urdhva Hastasana, while you're in this Dandasana staff posture, inhale. And then exhale, just lengthen it all up. And we're going to try the other side. So here we go. Let's take that right, bring it under. Take the left this time, up and over the right. Now, maybe this is enough and you stay here. Great place to stay. Maybe grab hold of that strap. And this time, we're going to take this. If I can get this arranged here, there we go. All right, left arm up, right arm pulling down. So this is Gomukhasana or cow face. Opening up the shoulder systems, lengthening through the triceps. Lift that spine, remember it, don't crunch it. Lift it, shoulders down the back, ribs in, obliques out, sit spins in, lengthen here. Okay, folks, you got about 25 seconds. So keep breathing, flex that left foot to protect the knee joint. Inhale, exhale. So we're going back to that deep cleansing breath, the lateral breathing pattern. Let everything expand, decompress, and open up. So let your belly push forward and out, along with the rib cage, those lungs, the diaphragm. Yep, that pelvic floor, huge part of your breathing mechanisms. Keep going, you're almost there. Inhale, and exhale, lengthen up, don't sink it. Remember, you wanna to try to get both parts of your glutes, both sides, onto that mat. And lengthen, almost there, almost there. Last 10, nine, Eight, just seven, six, five, four, three, two, okay, and one. Go ahead and release it, and then shake it out, roll it out. That's a lot. And then, before I forget, <laughs> we're gonna do the other side, um, um, I'm saying it, Agnishtambasana. So that fire look. So flex the foot, shoulders down, back ribs in, obliques out, sit spins in. Lengthen it up, arms up, here we go. Forward fold right here. Keep that foot flexed. You can widen the arms here if that's better or keep them forward. Deep, deep stretching activation in the abductors. This time on the left side. The left hip stretcher, keep breathing. Inhale, move your able to bring this just a little bit further forward, you got. 30 seconds, folks. Keep going. Flex that foot. Inhale. And exhale. And try to relax. There's a tendency to want to tense here. That's actually kind of the natural reaction of your muscle tissue when it gets stretched. It's part of something we call the myotonic stretch reflex. So when you stretch it, automatically it contracts. So this is one of the reasons why we hold these postures for longer and it helps you to overcome that stretch reflex. Keep flexing the foot. Let the musculature lengthen. We're almost there. It's 10, 9, 8, 7, just 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay. Go ahead and release out of that. Shake it out. Whew. And then Urdhva Hastasana, inhale. And then exhale, right down to heart center, down and back, ribs in, obliques out, sits bones in. Keep breathing. All right, so from here, we're gonna go back to that Bharadvanyasana. This time we're gonna find the other side. So, left leg, right leg. You can always have one right on top of the other. We'll go right here. All right, from here again, you're gonna try to just get both parts of your glutes. I know, it's really hard for me right now. I'm really tight, so I'm making all sorts of fun faces. So get those glutes down, and then inhale, exhale, and then here we go. You're just gonna look a little bit over that left shoulder and just kind of guide that left hand down and then tempt the fingers. And then apply just a tiny amount of pressure here against that right knee. Don't pull it. Don't find torque. Maybe you can bring it back just a little. Deep lengthening here. Inhale. And exhale. You can bind it. Keep stretching. Keep breathing. Lift that spine up. Try to get both parts, both sides of your glutes. Down against that mat. Lengthen your spine. Don't crunch, don't curve it. We're almost there. 
I promise. This one will end eventually. <laughs> Keep going. Inhale. And exhale. Just ten. Nine. Eight. Maybe a little bit farther. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Okay, carefully. Unroll that spine. Here we go. Again. Ooh, shake it up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fix the orange menace just right here. Grab your strap or your strap like object. Here you've got. It'll work. And then we're going to bring it down. Actually, kind of scooch up. We're going to have plenty of space. Okay. So, in your spine position, shoulders down and back, ribs in. Obliques out, six bones in. You've engaged the core, but you've left your spine neutral. Don't tense or stiffen the spine, thinking that that's going to help you find the core. That's not how things work. That's just going to load and possibly flex your spine, which is not necessarily a good thing. So leaving that spine nice and neutral, I want you to let all parts of it relax. Again, from that coccyx, that tailbone, to the sacrum, both parts of your spine there are fused with coccyx and the sacrum. A lot of, not a, let me say that again, not a lot of movement there. Moving up, you got that thoracic spine. This is where a lot of movement happens. This is your twisting action right here. Helps you twist while you walk, run, jump, skip. Oh, I forgot a part. The lumbar spine, that's before the thoracic spine. Apologies, folks. So right up above, that sacrum, you have the lumbar spine, and there are five lumbar vertebrae. They do not enjoy twisting. And then, again, the thoracic spine. These are the twisters. Moving up, past the thoracic spine, you have the cervical spine. Seven vertebrae. Again, they don't like to twist. Very top two, C1, C2. The atlas and the axis. Now these are thick, strong vertebrae. They help to move and maneuver that head and neck. Thinking about all parts of your spine. Let that spine breathe. No stress, no tension, no anxiety. You're letting it go. With your inhale, to loosen up any of that stress or tension. Exhale, just flush it out, let it go. Every part of that spine is relaxing. There's no compressive forces pushing against those vertebrae. You can let them chill here. Let's start to consider the discs in between the spine. These are like cushions for those vertebrae. They can become, they can become compressed. So go ahead and find some breathing room for those discs. Inhale. And exhale. And then consider the facet joints of your spine. These are your articulators. Find some breathing room for them. Inhale. And exhale, letting go of tension, stress. You don't need it, let it go. And then that spinal cord, vital to everything. It can become compressed. So let's open it up with your breath. Inhale, open up that spinal cord. Exhale, let that spinal fluid move free. And last but not least, you have got nerves that branch off every part of your vertebral column. Visualize each and every nerve here, like a tree they branch off. They can become compressed. <coughs> Pardon me. So open those up with your breath. Inhale. And exhale. All right, every part of that spine decompressing. No stress, no tension. Grab your strap. We're gonna loop it around that foot, on the right foot, right underneath the toes, the metatarsals. Flex your foot, relax your knee, and then pull this in. Deep stretching action through the hamstrings. Hi, buddy. The calves. Relax the knee again. No stress or tension in the knee joints. 
I'm gonna let those quads be bossy. Relax them. And we're gonna hold this one. So hold on this one. <coughs> Pardon me. I got attacked by some lovely allergies here. So maybe you're able to bring those toes down just a little bit more towards your face. Inhale. And exhale. The orange menace is in full force today, folks. Sorry. He refuses to be cooped up or banished. We're nearly there. You got 10, 9, 8, just 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so. That was about a minute there. Now we're gonna take that same leg. Now stretch the strap out. Using the left hand, left arm here to help you guide that leg over out to the side. Hello, adductors. Hello, hamstrings. Relax the knee, flex the foot. Relax the quads and then gently kind of pull it up. There should be no pain. If you're feeling pain or discomfort, back off. Let your body signal telling you, not today. If it's feeling good, go ahead and stretch a little bit deeper. Inhale and exhale. Remember, we are not here to find pain. We're not here to tie ourselves in knots or to find discomfort. We're here to become strong and mobile for all the right reasons in all the right places. Keep going, right here. We're gonna keep stretching. Right afters. What are those hamstrings too? Keep going. This is 10. Use that breath, don't hold it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, almost there, three, two, and one. Now, carefully, we're gonna guide that leg across towards the left. So, flex the foot. Just kind of let it float on down. Extend your right arm. You can swivel your head over towards the right palm or keep it nice and neutral. I'm finding just that tiny bit of actual spinal twist here. You can stay right here or extend the left leg and then allow that right leg to kind of just guide all the way down. And then again, try to press that right shoulder down Relax, no stress, no tension. This is a true spinal twist. Inhale, exhale. Again, working those abductors and lengthening them out. Kind of melt into this. It's real tempting, I know, to tense or stress certain areas of the body. But with your breath, loosen it up. Exhale, let it go. There, you got this. Keep going. We're going to keep this one here for about a minute and a half, so there's about 28 seconds. Inhale and exhale. Keep going. And that head can swivel out towards the right palm. You can keep it center. Just trying to keep hold of that timing here. we got eight, seven, just six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so go ahead and let's find a restorative bridge lift. So before I move to the other side, we're gonna bring the feet hip width apart, toes are gonna track forward, shoulders down and back, ribs in, obliques out, six bones in, so neutral spine, active core. Now start here, we're gonna find Setu Bandhasana Sharvangasana, or bridge gonna push in your feet. So spread your toes, push in all corners, all parts of your feet. And then lift your hips up. Reach your arms up and just bring them in shoulder flexion right behind you. If this doesn't feel good, you can bring them down. That's fine too. That'll work. Keep lifting. Keep lifting. You can go ahead and relax one leg down if that feels good. Flex the foot. Roll it out. Maybe. And keep that one. Reaching down. Lifting those hips, we're going to get back. All right, 
keep going, folks. I've got a cramp on my hamstring here. So I'm going to have to keep right here. Or, okay, there you go. Got rid of it. Let's go ahead and find that other leg. Bringing it down, lifting up into that single leg bridge lift. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Or you can bring it all the way up. Shoulders down and backwards and oblique out to spoons and bridge your feet the floor. Lift the hips. Inhale and exhale. Now note here, if the knees start to ache, you can kind of squinch your feet farther away from the glutes and lessen the knee flexion. But if you're actually looking for a little bit more quads, bring the heels in towards the glutes a little bit more and then lift those hips up. You can tuck the heels in towards the glutes to get some hamstring action. If you find a chest opener here, right underneath and you hold. Keep that breath deep, even, mindful. This is mindful mobility. So we're paying attention. Last 10, nine, just eight, seven, almost there folks, keep going, six, five, just four, three, almost there, two, okay, and one. Now hug the knees into Apanasana and just sway side to side to loosen up that lumbar spine, the low back, also bonus, Apanasana helps you to open up and decompress the sciatic nerve. That's a fun one. It's the largest nerve in your body. And it basically, kind of a giant U, really, behind the hips, and it reaches down to the backs of both legs. It has lots of chances to become compressed and grumpy. So let it open up here. And then when you're ready, go ahead and grab the strap for the other leg. So this time we're going to find the left. Loop that strap around. How's there, folks? Keep breathing. Shoulders down and back, ribs in, both legs out, six bends in. All right, so flexing the foot, but relaxing the knee, relaxing those quads. And then just gently guide the toes towards your face. Again, no pain. This is not about finding pain or stress or strain. If you're feeling that, back it off until you're not. Keep breathing. We're going to hold for a full minute here. Inhale. Exhale. Breath is strong. Steady. You're not holding on to tension, anxiety, or stress. You're letting it go with your breath. Vital component of everything. Life is pranayama. That's your breath. Keep going here. We've got 10 seconds. Actually, it's a little bit longer. My bad. You got 20 seconds. Keep going. Maybe you're allowed to just kind of stretch a little bit further. Maybe not. Maybe you need to take a break. Keep going. Inhale. And exhale. All right. Now it's 10 seconds. 10. Strings. It's a deeper stretch, just a different angle to get at them. Keep breathing here. Inhale and exhale. So the more you flex your foot here, the more you're going to stretch through the calf systems. That's also a fun little muscle that runs right behind your knee. I've got a couple back there. The one I'm talking about is the biceps femoris. Now this is a medial hamstring, and this muscle is grouchy. So if you're feeling a pull behind your knee, it's most likely the biceps femoris. So as long as there's no pain, just breathe through and let it stretch. Let it lengthen. About halfway there, keep breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe you're able to just go a little bit deeper, pull a little bit more. But remember, if not, back away. We're not here to find stress or strain. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, we're almost there, folks. Just five, four, three, 
two, and one. Okay, guiding it over. All right, cross the body. So into that gentle, true spinal twist. Flex the feet, relax the knees, relax the quads, and you can stay right here. Maybe this is good enough. Or extend that right leg and then guide that leg all the way over. And of course, you can keep your head, your gaze, your dishy point straight up the ceiling. Or swivel your head so your dishy point is right past your fingertips. Inhale. And exhale. You may feel with this one a deeper relaxation in the abductors. Again, those deep external rotators. Piriformis among them. It's a grumpy little one, that piriformis, part of your deep six external rotator group. Let it lengthen. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, folks. Nearly there. And we're going to find some spinal traction after this and relax and decompress that spine. Inhale. And exhale. Even more than we already did. <laughs> Keep going. Just 10, 9, 8, 7, just 6, 5, 4, back to your Apanasana. Find that little bit of sway. Now, a couple options here. If you'd rather, you can find Happy Baby or stay here. Happy Baby, first option. Hands behind the knees and just open up and sway it out. Traditional Happy Baby, you grab the heels and you press the sacrum down. Kind of really compress into those hip flexors by pulling your knees in towards your chest. Or you can find the nuclear option, folks, which is to stretch both legs, flex the feet, and keep that space side to side. This is transitory, so we're not going to stay here long. Just 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Let's find internal hip rotation. Just not too long here, just enough to kind of really get them to relax. So you're going to bring the feet out towards the edges of the mat and then knock the knees in together for internal hip rotation. If this doesn't feel good, ditch it. But if it's really helping, go ahead, let those internal hip rotators stretch and lengthen. They get ignored quite often. You see, they could be really grumpy right now, so let them open up. to the left. 
You can sit up and find Sukhasana. You can find child's pose. Any posture, any position that's going to help you achieve relaxation and a deep breathing state, that's where I want you to go. Now closing the eyes is optional. You don't have to. Maybe you just keep them open and unfocus that gaze. Start here with the breath. Inhale. And exhale. You've got all parts, all components of those breathing systems. The core, the pelvic floor, lungs, the muscles that help you breathe. Inhale. And exhale. Now let your core relax. Pelvic floor relax. Any stress, any tension that you're holding on to, with that inhale, seek it out. Loosen it up with the exhale. Send it away. Away from you. Maybe you start with the facial muscles. Unsquint the eyes. Allow the jaw to relax. Wherever that tension is, shoulders, hips, spine, knees, quads, even your toes. Wherever you've stored stress, tension, anxiety, again, with the inhale, loosen it up with the exhale, send it away. Don't hold on to it, it doesn't serve you. Just let your cares, your worries, go float away. It would help to focus on the breath. to bring your gaze inward. Maybe you push out all those frantic, frenetic thoughts. Just push them away. Let them disperse. For the next few moments, be free. All those worries, those cares, they're waiting for us when we're ready. But for now, I have a little freedom here. And remind yourself that it's okay to struggle. We all do. Struggle is where strength is found. Inhale. Exhale. Continue your journey. Inward, go a little deeper. Maybe it would help to visualize Ajna, your third eye. This is your pineal gland deep in the center of your brain. Maybe it would help to visualize light starting to emanate from the pineal gland. Just let it expand and spill out all over, around, and surround you. That glowing, nurturing light. Inhale. Whatever you don't need, exhale. Let it go. In addition to that stress, that tension, that anxiety, those cares, those worries, maybe you're ready to let go of other things that are holding you back. Heavy emotional weight. Self-doubt, self-defeatism, negative self-talk, fear, resentment, anger, panic. All of these things hold you back. Inhale. Loosen them up. Exhale. Send them away. Away from you. Just let the earth, the air, the earth take care of it. In its place, fill yourself up with what you do need. Light, love gratitude, joy. These things are all around, although they can be hard to see. Maybe it would help to visualize what brings you that light, that love, that gratitude, that joy. Family, friends, hobbies, work, the animals in your lives, your pets, whatever it is. Inhale, right here. To every cell, every atom. And then continue to let go of what doesn't serve you, what you don't need to hold on to. Remind yourself who you are. You are strong. You are brave. You are of worth, of value. You are beautiful. You are enough. You are all of this and so much more. Inhale that knowledge. Every cell, every atom. And let go of what you don't need. 
remember that we are powerful beings and our power resides in our ability to choose what we do, what we hold close, and what we nurture. Inhale. few moments for quiet breath, quiet contemplation. Start by wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. Maybe you roll under the shoulders. You kind of wiggle those limbs a little, find a little life in those limbs. But if you do not feel ready, stay where you are until you feel like you're ready to come back. And then join me in Varasana, kneeling posture or in any posture that feels good right now. Let's find our ceiling breaths here. Inhale. All that you need. Light, love, gratitude, joy, right to your heart. And again, inhale. Exhale. Here we go, one more time. Inhale. And exhale. And allow your eyes to close if it's okay. And that little pause, one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Namaste. Namaste means the light in me honors the light in you. I am so glad that you are here with me today. And again, folks, keep loving on each other. Keep reaching out. I know that we're physically apart, but do keep reaching out to each other, making sure everyone is okay in these trying times. If you have comments, questions, I'd love to hear from you. So comment away. Let me know what you're thinking. My name is Shar, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And namaste and thank you.